What's going on, everybody? We're live on the YouTube channel. Derek Bennett here, your instructor and your question answer <laughs> for the day. Um, if you're just now tuning in or if you're watching us on a rebroadcast, you can still ask your questions. I'm going to try to get to as many as I possibly can. Uh, I asked this question on my Instagram uh, profile yesterday. Um, I did a live stream on there. Uh, so if you're not following me on Instagram, check out the link below. Just go check that out. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, we get a lot of stuff done, a lot of covers. Uh, we talk about a lot of things. I go live often. Um, <clears throat> so just go check it out. Fun place to be. Always posting something crazy. All right. Um, I'm going to go tell my Instagram followers now to go to come in and join us live. One second. There we go. Push up a button. All right. Hey, teacher, music is my life. Hey, what's going on? Uh, that is a great name, by the way. Music is my life. <laughs> music, <laughs> music, my life. Uh, Lucas, hey, what's going on? Arian, if I'm saying that right, what's going on? Thank you for joining in. Uh, like I said, if you're just now tuning in now, I'm going to be ask, answering some of the questions that I got that I received yesterday. Uh, they're pretty interesting. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with like the easy ones. Uh, so first off, let's let's read. I'm just looking through the questions that I got yesterday. Uh, let's get this one out the way. <laughs> what does Derek Bennett look like <laughs> without the shades? So I'll do that for you now. This is what I, this is me. This is what I look like. It's not too much different, right? <laughs> not too much different. That's what I look like without the shades. All right. So that was one question. I, that was a funny one. I like that. Uh, I'm going to be answering some of you guys questions now that are on live, but let me get to the ones that were asked yesterday, uh, just to get them out the way. I'm going to uh, come to you guys later. Uh, just want to see who's coming in for right now. Um, if I can see, <laughs> just want to tell you that your videos are great. Oh, that is, that's, I appreciate that so much. Thank you so much. That, that is awesome. That is awesome. Hey, I'm missing a lot of questions. Hey, um, yeah, some questions are coming in. That's great. Perfect. Yeah. Keep them coming. Uh, memorizing those on the prep board. I'm going to get to that. All right. So let me get to the other questions here. How often do I practice? Uh, I put up a post uh, from the Base Nation TV episode of me and Alan Snoop Evans. We were talking about practice routine, practice regimens, uh, how long do we practice, the, the fact that we get that question all the time. And we went back to the days when we uh, first started playing and, and the passion behind us playing uh, the bass and the love for it. And w whenever we saw it, we just picked it up and kind of start playing. Um, it just it was a passion of ours. We didn't consider what time we were playing or how long we had to pra practice for an hour or practice for two hours, practice your scales for one hour, practice your arpeggios for the next hour. It wasn't like that. It was just our playing was our practice. You know, our having fun was our practice. And I always say, uh, if you're not having fun, if you don't have a passion for it, don't do it. You know, if you don't love the bass, I wouldn't play it, you know? Um, but it, it also has to do with, I think somebody commented on one of the posts on, on the post that I put up too. And they said, um, it's about the quality of what you're practicing. And that is also absolutely true. It's about what you're practicing as well as how long you're practicing. I would practice overnight. Uh, <laughs> I would fall asleep with the bass in my hands and just be practicing and playing and wouldn't be anything specific or, you know, just the fact of using the muscle memory, just playing something over and over and over again. So it depends on what your goal is. You know, I just wanted to play. I wanted to be great. You know, I, I love playing. Uh, I wanted to play back anything I heard. So, I played until I got it <laughs> for the simple answer. I know everybody wants to hear that. Practice this for 45 minutes, practice that for 45 minutes or 30 minutes. And I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to say that everybody's learning ability is different. So it's going to take somebody else a longer time to learn something versus uh, the other person. Some other people are quick learners. So that's my general answer to that. Okay. <laughs> next question. Um, the next question was, from Niro.fb, N-I-R-O, uh, and they just said cheap, good bass. <laughs> it's a very general question. Uh, it depends on what you find as cheap. Uh, so if you're going like bottom of the, you know, pit cheap, I mean, the cheapest bass you can possibly find, you can always go on Craigslist or any internet site and 
uh, see if somebody's selling something. I know some crazy deals on on bases that people are just trying to get rid of. Um, that maybe just collectors or that you know collectors items they're just trying to get rid of and you can get a crazy price on a decent base on a uh, on a pretty good base i know a few guys <laughs> that got some steals on some crazy bases there's another base that i play uh the squire jaguar if you've been watching me for any time uh any length of time you know that i play the squire jaguar base when i usually teach uh it is a decent base uh it sounds good <laughs> and it's dependent on the player too you know you can't base your thoughts on uh or you can't base your opinion on just the, the quality of the bass. You know, sometimes high quality basses don't sound that great. You know, you have to be careful with that. So it's all about how you play in your own technique. But the Squire bass is a very modest price bass. I, uh, my wife actually bought it for me um, for Christmas one year. And it was, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was only like the one to $200 range. Uh, it wasn't that expensive at all. The link to it is actually in the description. So if you guys are interested in a good starter base or a good cheap base, the Squire Jaguar is an awesome base. It's an active base. Um, it's an awesome beginner base. If, you, if you're interested, check that out below. So link straight to it. Um, okay, next question. <laughs> next question. Somebody said, what do, you, what do I think of base mods? I think they mean a base mods, the company base mods. Um, I haven't really, I've never really played a base mod, but I heard great things about them. Um, so I guess that's really all I have to really say. I've heard great things from different friends of mine that have them, that play them, and they live by them. Um, okay, next question. What strings would I recommend? I would recommend these strings right here. The Dunlop Super Bright strings, right? You can get these, the link to these are in the description as well. Uh, Dunlop Super Bright stainless steel strings. Um, I've been using stainless steel strings for, uh, excuse me, for forever. Uh, they just... They feel good to me in every situation, um, in every genre to me, really. I, I have some flat wounds too on one of my bases that, that feel amazing, that sound pretty great. You know, I, I'm a brighter type of guy, so uh, those flat wounds are on the bright side. Um, yeah, and they feel pretty good. I mean, I haven't, I'm not uh, a pioneer when it comes to flat wounds and playing that. Uh, I, I really don't have too much experience, but when I did play them, they felt great, uh, and it sounded great as well, and they lasted a while. Um, and, you know, a flat ones always sound better <laughs> the next day, not the next day, but like, you know, when you play them uh, more and more, they sound better. Right. OK, next question. I see you guys. I, I'm, 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 I'm seeing you guys. I'm seeing you guys come in and I see you guys question. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm missing a lot of questions. Trust me, I'm going to go back and answer some of you guys question. Uh, I won't be long today. I thought this would just be fun to, uh, you know, interact with you guys and and get a little bit about me. I know I've been doing the Base Nation TV episodes and uh, that's about other people. Um, but that's, I have some of my input in there as well. If you can watch the whole entire thing on DerekBennett.com for the members only in the Members Academy, you can watch the entire uncut version uh, of it. And they're also available. Uh, I'll make them available on YouTube. Uh, part of it available on YouTube as well. But people want to know, they wanted to know about me. So I guess <laughs> I, it's only fair. So I can show you my insight or, you know, just a little bit about me. So I see you guys coming in. I see you. I see you. I see you. What's going on? Uh, Fitzgerald Tate. I see your question. I see your question. Robert, I see your question. Um, <laughs> uh, Patrick, I see your comment. I see your question. Uh, Donnie Ragsdale. Ragsdale, I see your question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to you guys. Trust me. Stay tuned. Stay for the whole thing. Trust me. All right. Okay. Next question. This is a good question. Uh, the last question about what strings was from Leather Kitchen on Instagram. Um, the next one was from S Glover 007. How do you memorize all of your song sets? Uh, that is a good question. Uh, like I said, some people learning ability is different. Uh, some people learn at a faster rate. Some people memorize at a faster, quicker rate or more than others. Uh, I'm not even going to lie to you guys. Sometimes, most times I have a cheat sheet, you know, written out for some of my sets. Um, only because I play so much. And if there's a lot of material to remember, sometimes I'll have a cheat sheet. And you know what else? Writing that down, the physical act of writing uh, your notes down or a cheat sheet or a chord chart or anything, you know, whatever helps you to do that uh, or to help you to memorize it, it helps you a lot more in the long run because you may not have to use that cheat sheet because the, the art of in the, in the physical act of writing it down to me helps me remember you know, when I'm not looking at it, okay, I remember writing that down, you know, so sometimes it'll help me and I don't need the cheat sheet or I don't need the, uh, the lead sheet, 
or whatever notes that I'm taking. So it's, it's what I do. My method is I'm going to tell you guys a little secret now, since you guys are live on with me, <laughs> on live with me. And like I said, guys, if you're on the, the rebroadcast and you're watching this over again, this is just for people that are not live right now or not watching live, uh, ask your questions and I'll get to them. Uh, I'll try to get to them in another episode of ask Derek. Um, so you guys won't be forgotten. So go ahead and ask your questions as well. You're not, you know, I won't forget about you. <laughs> so, but anyway, I was talking about practicing, not practicing, but memorizing your memorizing. Uh, what was the question? Memorizing song sets. Uh, so, yeah, that's an easy way to do it. Just write, write your song sets out. Write your, you know, don't don't feel bad that you have to write stuff out. You know, sometimes I come with a stand, you know, at, uh, to certain gigs, but it's going to help me in the long run. Um, I think there was one more tip I was going to show you. I was going to tell you guys. Oh, that was it. My little secret tip is as soon as I get songs to learn or if I'm recording bass or if I'm recording a track or getting ready to play a gig, I listen to the song over and over and over and over again before I even touch my bass. I listen to the song before I even touch a string, listen to it maybe about three, maybe two to three times. Then I'm more familiar with it. Once I get to my bass, I'm not struggling because I'm hearing it and my ear is pretty good now, <laughs> I would think. Uh, and it helps me a little bit more to retain that information once I get to my base. Okay, that's enough of that. I'm, I'm going to be all day if I keep <laughs> elaborating so much. Do I use any bass pedals? Yes, I do use bass pedals. I use, I have one here. I can show you guys. And before anybody asks, <laughs> this is an Elric bass. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hence the E, Elric bass guitar, an NJS uh, New Jazz Standard version if you guys are interested all right so i do use some pedals from um, mxr or dunlop pedals uh and they're pretty great i don't do anything too fancy uh, i don't use anything too fancy but i have a like you know for like cording and stuff like that i have a reverb here um you can you can hear the difference between it let me turn it off Okay, you can hear the difference between that. That's a straight sound. And there's a there's a reverb. It's just that airy sound. Um, it is the I don't want to pick it up right now because it's all connected, <laughs> but it's the reverb pedal. I'll put that in the description afterwards too. Uh, reverb MXR. I forget the numbers. I'm terrible with names. But anyway, it's the reverb pedal, uh, MXR pedal. And this is also another pedal that I use down here right now that I just have hooked up right now. Uh, it's an envelope filter. Yeah, just an envelope filter that had that kind of wonky, crazy sound. A lot of people think I'm using a wah pedal or a T wah or something like that, but it's not a wah. It's an envelope filter. It's by the same company. But anyway, <laughs> that was enough of that. All right, so I didn't want to play too much. Uh, I want to get to these questions, or I'll be all day. Okay. Another question was from Manuel's Music Ten on Instagram. Do I change the action of my bass? Uh, I'm not sure if he means the action after I get my bases or uh, just my own setups, but I've been doing, I've been doing my own setups on my base ever since I've been playing. Uh, I don't think I've ever taken it to someone to set it up. No, I don't think I've ever done it. I was always one of those kids that's like taking apart things and trying to put them back together. Uh, and like, you know, stealing my dad's tools and stuff like that. I remember chipping out one of my bases, trying to add some pickups in like chipping the wood, you know, <laughs> just to fit the pickup inside of it, trying to change electronics at like 12 years old. But anyway, that was me. I'm crazy. So yes, I do change the action of my bass. Um, another question. Uh, da, 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 da. GK or Ampeg? Easy question. Boom. No more to say. <laughs> no more to say about that. But Ampeg is awesome too. All of these amp companies are. I mean, you can throw a rock and hit an amp in a music store, and it's going to be pretty good. So all of these amp companies are awesome. Uh, I just rep GK. Uh, they're awesome company. Great people. Uh, 
uh, I have a relationship with them and they're awesome products. I've been using them for forever. Uh, so GK, um, that was from Michael Belfridge, if I'm, uh, not mistaken. Oh, another easy question. How long have I been playing bass? I've been playing bass since I was like 11 or 12 years old, like 11, 10, like 10, 11, 12. It was, it's the timeline is crazy because I got a bass, but I didn't play it at first. So I picked it up a little bit later. Uh, but I've been playing like since I was like 10, 11, something like that. And I'm almost 30 now. So that gives you an idea. <laughs> Someone asked how much did my bass cost? I'm not sure exactly which bass they're referring to, so I'll leave that question now. Um, okay, let me get to some of you guys. Let me get to some of you guys. Um, oh, one more question from Jersh Jekka on Instagram. Do I play any other instruments? Yes, I do. I play very little, very little. I play very little guitar, but we'll, we'll yeah, we'll let that go. I, play, I started off a little bit on guitar, but it's just too small very it's too small okay <laughs> uh but if i have to play i will play okay now i'm going to wrap it up but i'm going to answer you guys question i'm going to go down if you guys are still watching i'm going to go down the line and answer some of you guys' questions um wow it's a lot of questions all right so if i don't get to your question don't be mad just write it for the next time um afterwards or send me a direct message go follow the instagram page in the description below go check it out um or like I said, just write your comment later on. Okay, so, 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 let me pick out some. Okay, hello, hello. I want to say hi to everybody. Uh, thank you for now. Who's tuning in right now? So it's a bunch of people on. Didn't even realize that. Somebody said, do I have a dog? Yes, I do have a dog. He's upstairs somewhere right now. <laughs> um, he's a pit bull. Um, for a beginner, Kino8351 says, what's the best thing to start with for a beginner? I get this question so much, so, so, so much. And I actually did a video and I'm going to release a video on my website on the online academy about where to start. There's tons of tutorials that I released for, especially for beginners, where to start off uh, playing, where to start off learning. If you just bought a bass, you have no idea what to do. There are courses on DerekBennett.com and even some here, even on YouTube, uh, you can search for, um, they go, they go, not too much in depth, but they show you the basics of what you need to know when you're a beginner, but you need to start off with the anatomy. That's what I say, the anatomy of the bass. What are the components of the bass? You know, your EQ, your setup, your knob setup. You need to figure that out. Um, your pickup setup, your strings, the notes of your strings, your fretboard, the notes on the fretboard. Just figuring out the anatomy of the bass. First off, how to tune. Oh God, I have tons of tutorials on that. Full courses on DerekBennett.com or the Bass Nation Academy. Uh, full courses on that. Uh, beginner, because I know how important it is or how crazy it is when you first start playing, you don't know, you have no idea what to do or what to start with. So trust me, I understand and I have a solution for all of you, but that's just a, to sum it up just a little bit of what you would need to know first starting off. Okay. Um, okay. Donnie Ragsdale asks, what's a great way of harmonizing the major and minor scale? Great way with harmonizing harmony, meaning, uh, just you using other notes to kind of coincide with one note or using intervals or just, you know, kind of stacking, I wouldn't say just chords, but harmony has to do with, uh, whatever is, uh, diatonically, I would say, uh, inside of that scale, whatever scale you use and say, if you're doing major, like you just said, uh, you'll, you'll harmonize diatonically with the major scale, minor, same thing with the minor scale. Um, so harmonizing, you can start off with thirds, just harmonize the major scale with two notes, but just with the interval, just with the thirds. You know, you can do it, you see it all the time, you hear it all the time. It's, uh, so say if you're playing, uh, excuse me, say if you're playing G major scale and you're playing with the thirds. All right, th those are thirds. I'm playing major third, minor third, minor third, major third, major third, minor third, and, and it goes on like that, so I won't get too in, in depth with it. But you can do the same thing with double stops. Uh, you can do the same exact thing with double stops. Uh, and I'm just playing the 10th with this, which is the octave of the three, of the third note. It's the same exact note, but it's an octave higher. <laughs> Trust me, it's the same exact note. All right, so. That's just uh, an example of how to harmonize with the major scale. All right, next one. Jeez, I'm not gonna have time. I'll, I'll probably, jeez, I'm not gonna have time to answer all these questions. Um, what's the best way to force yourself to learn a song in one day so you don't learn 
songs and crunchy, inaccurate bits to force yourself to learn a song in one day so you don't learn songs. I'm not exactly sure of the question, Patrick. Um, so you don't force yourself to learn a song in one day so you don't so you don't learn songs in crunchy, inaccurate bits. Uh, so basically, you're asking how to learn a song in a whole um, in one day uh, besides breaking it up. I think that's what you're asking. Um, and I, I touched on that question a little bit on uh, the way I practice. And if I have to learn a song or memorize sets, I'll listen to the song three or four times. Then I'll come to my bass and I'll play it and I'll make some notes. And then I'll go from there because I'm more familiarized with the actual song. Right. OK, I'm trying. I'm going to try to skim through these really quick. Um, OK. Thank you guys for tuning in, by the way. Um, OK. Um, I'm trying to, I think I lost my place. I'm so sorry. Somebody said, what up? I hit the like button. That is awesome. Make sure you guys hit the like button, hit the share button, whatever button you can press. <laughs> That's a positive button. Okay, man, I lost my place. I'm so sorry. Um, here we go. Can you make a, you can, can you make a slap video? I have slap tutorials all over the place, um, available on YouTube and even more in depth on uh, in the Base Nation Academy. Go check that out. That link is in the description too. If you guys are interested in learning or taking classes on how to play bass and learning from me, check that out. Link is the first link in the description. Um, Ricky, I see you. Ricky, I see you. Guys, child, hello. I was wondering if I'd be able to tell me not, be able to tell me not turn around or regressions, an interesting rhythm or a way to move from from the baseline. I am sorry, so sorry. I don't really understand the question. It's worded very weird. Um, guys, child, if you can ask me that again, I'll try to get to it. Um, hi, Derek. Do you know the sire bass is good or bad? Okay. Um, oh, sorry. Sire bass is good or bad. Um, I've heard about sire basses, heard great things about them as well. Uh, I haven't played, I think I played one one time. I can't remember, uh, but I, what I do remember was pretty decent bass. Uh, do I ever take time off vacations without the bass? Very rarely, <laughs> but I do. It's important to get that rest in as well. As much as I do love the bass, I try to take some time off. Um, okay. Would you start off with a five string bass? No, I would not. I would start off with a four string. I recommend to start off with a four string. I know that's a big debate about five string versus four string. I would start off on four string. It is easier to transition to five string or to six string. Um, uh, oh, somebody said the envelope sounds so good. Wow, I'm so far behind with the, with the questions. Uh, yeah, the envelope filter is amazing. I love that thing. You can get like a wide type of deep type of, uh, you know, Moog almost sound out of that envelope filter. If you know what you're doing. Um, how long have you been playing bass? I think I understand that. I understood. I mean, I, I think I elaborated on that. Uh, I've been playing for about closer to 20 years. Um, closer to 20 years. Pick style bass, Cody Wright style opinion. Cody Wright is my man. Cody Wright is is literally my one of my good friends uh and i love cody's playing cody's cody plays with a pick uh awesome bass player awesome guitar player funkiest dude i mean ever um i love it i love it i love it i love it uh i i can't do what he does <laughs> uh but um but i love the style it's very different okay I'm trying to Somebody said four or five or six string bass. Uh, I prefer five most times when I'm playing out. Uh, is it clever to start with a five string? That's the same question. Uh, not necessarily for me. I wouldn't recommend four string is the way to go when you're when you're first starting off. I would recommend. Uh, hi from Denmark. Um, how can I get more creative with different rhythms on bass when freestyling or writing my own riffs? I seem to get stuck with the same rhythms. Krista, Krista Louise. Um, more creative with different rhythms. Uh, there's a certain apps that you can actually practice with that have different rhythms or different drum timing or different drum beats. Uh, here is one little nifty tool from the good people of 
uh, singular sound. It's called the Beat Buddy. Um, yeah, the Beat Buddy has all different types of uh, drum loops in it. It does different timings, di different time signatures. Um, check them out. Singular Sound is an awesome company, awesome people. Uh, they sent this over to me to check it out, and I've been practicing with it ever since. So it has different time rhythms, 6, 8, uh, 7, 8, 5, 4, you know, those different time signatures, different rhythms to help you out with your phrasing uh, so you can come back in on the one. Uh, that's what I would start practicing with. Uh, you know, if you're trying to figure out different rhythms and different phrasing, you can actually start with those different time signatures uh, and, and it'll help you a little bit with your phrasing, uh, with your with your riffs and your licks and things like that and your bass lines. Uh, so that's one thing I would recommend. And there's different apps out there that they have different loops or different time signatures, because I know some everybody, everybody gets tired of those metronomes, you know, uh, <laughs> they just yeah, they get tired of the metronomes. Uh, you just hear that do, 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 do. like you hear it, it's, it gets very boring. But anyway, that's that's one uh, suggestion that I have. All right, guys, couple more questions, and I'm going to end it. <laughs> I'm going to be here all day answering questions. Uh, but thank you guys for the questions. Thank you guys for tuning in. Does your um. Does your rhythmic ideas differ when playing precision bass instead of jazz bass? Um, that's a good question. Does my rhythmic ideas change? Rhythmically, not necessarily they don't change. Um, my voicing, my style, uh, as far as what bass line I would play, like a difference from between this bass, this is not a precision bass, but uh, between a jazz bass and like, uh, you know, like a boutique bass, like my signature back here, um, I tend to play a little bit different because they have, they sound better with different styles. You know, like this, this bass is an awesome bass for slapping. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, this is awesome. This is an awesome bass for slapping. Uh, sometimes I might quarter with it, I might do something, but most of the times I'm kind of slapping on. You know, I just, I don't know, I'm getting kind of carried away. But you can see, uh, it sounds a little bit better when I'm slapping on it. I love picking on this bass too. But it, it doesn't change rhythmically. It just, I mean, that's a good question though. But I, I don't think, I don't think rhythm, rhythmically is the right word. I think it's just style based. Um, do I use a number system often? Yes, I do use a number system often. Uh, when I'm playing with bands, when you're playing, uh, when anybody's playing with bands, you, the number system is everywhere. If you know your major scale or any scale, the number system is there. You're just naming the notes. You're numbering the notes uh, of those scales. Uh, so say if you go to the two chord, that's the two note, that's the second note of the scale, three chord, that's the third note of the scale. Um, seventh chord, that's the seventh note of the scale. Uh, so you're using it all the time. You might not talk like that, but you're using the number system is there. You can't get away from it. You know what I mean? You, you really can't get away from the number system. So good question. Uh, descending bass lines, tips, uh, speed and tone. Uh, Joshua, descending bass line tips, um, speed and tone. Descending bass line tips as in, I don't, I'm not sure of the question, but speed and tone. T uh, I would work on technique before I work on speed because the speed will come. It was funny. I was watching like a I don't know if you guys know Gordon Ramsay. I like those cooking. Shows. I don't know why I love those cooking shows so much, but I was, you know, I was watching him, you know, he's a, he's a master chef. So he was cooking and he was like cutting some tomatoes or some onions. I don't know what it was, but some, he was teaching somebody and they were upset that he couldn't go as quick as he got, as quick as he was going. And he was saying, you know, the speed is going to come, get your technique right. And I said, that's what I say all the time. It was so funny. He used that in that sense as well, but that's very true. Your technique is what's going to get you that speed. You know, once you work on the technique, the better your technique is, the quicker you can get, right? So keep that in mind. Um, thank you for the knowledge. Your base knowledge. Keep up the good videos. Kelvin uh, Atkin Atkinson, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the uh, comment, man. I appreciate it. Uh, the good times. Uh, oh, Theo, <laughs> Theo, good times. Who do I play with? I play with several people. I usually play from home. Um, but I, I usually play on different albums and things like that. And people ask me to play on different tracks and things like that. I, I rarely travel too much, but one of the bands I do travel with is called the Campbell Brothers. Um, you won't see me. Uh, we don't tour as much as we used to, but I've been all over the world with them. Uh, and some def different uh, gospel artists and things like that. Too many to name right now. Uh, but whenever I try to 
or if you follow me on any of my social media, like the Facebook or the Instagram, I'll try to let you guys know when I'm in different areas. Uh, like in a few weeks, I'll be somewhere. I can't even remember. <laughs> I'll be in a port. I'll be in Portland in a few weeks and then in North Carolina for a musician summit in a few weeks as well. Uh, <clears throat> but I try to let you guys know, especially if you follow me on my social media, it's easier to follow me there and know exactly what I'm doing uh, and check me out. But anyway, good question. Uh, two more questions and I'm going. All right. What's the difference between from the Eden and Eden and GK as far as Tony, your opinion? Um, when I play with the Eden uh, cabinets or uh, amplifiers, they're more bassy. Uh, they have more of a round, huge round tone uh, to them. Um, and they're different as far as their parametric EQ it depends on what kind of head you get. I haven't played with them in, in a while. So my mind is kind of escaping me, but I do remember them just having a very, very deep, rich bass, uh, low end frequency to them. GK is very flat. Like I like that. Like you can still manipulate it in a way, but their flat tone is very, very natural to me. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just, I don't know. I just, I prefer that. It's a personal preference. All right. One more question. One more question. I'm trying to pick some more questions are coming in. I'm, I'm trying to pick one more question. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to pick. I'm going through the so I'm going through the questions. Um, Oh, Javier, well, let me say this one first. Uh, I think Javier, uh, hey Derek, shout out to you. You're amazing regards uh, regards from El Salvador. Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for tuning in as well. Okay, more questions are coming in. How could you play when you have to play with a drummer that can't keep tempo? That is an awesome question. Um, My answer to that, this is the last question. If you guys want to write that question, Inbox me, th inbox me these questions or send me an email. You can go to DerekBennett.com and ask your questions. If I didn't get to them or write them below, uh, you know, and after the, um, the live stream is over, over, write them below and I'll try to get to them. Um, the next episode of Ask Derek. OK, um, so. Question from Junichi. Junichi. I'm not sure. <laughs> I try not to put your names, but OK. They ask, how would you play? when you have to play with a drummer who can't keep tempo. All right. So first of all, that drummer needs to go back to the drum board. <laughs> the drummer needs to go back in the shed room. They need to shed a little bit more practice on their timing or their, you know, on their, uh, just their rudiments basic in, in general. Uh, but you as a bass player, if you're playing with somebody like that, it's important for you to help drive that. If you understand that the tempo is being slowed up, uh, not slowed up, but <laughs> slowed down and sped up constantly or just not consistent. You know that and you recognize that it's your job to kind of bring them in. All right. So the drums and bass work together. I tell that I, I say that all the time. I made a post on my Instagram page a little while ago about me and my brother. My brother is an amazing drummer. Uh, his name is Levi Bennett, but we've been playing ever since we were kids. Literally, he's been playing way before me playing drums and playing everything else. But he's an awesome drummer. So I had that advantage. Everybody doesn't have that advantage, but I have played with some people that, that haven't been the best, right? So I have to pull them in with my low frequency of my bass note or my bass line. I have to make sure I'm on point and kind of bring him in with me. We communicate, connect, you know, connect eyes and make sure, you know, okay, let's, let's slow it down, you know. Uh, if it's a little bit slower than that. So I have to drive him, you know, my body movement and everything like that. The way that I'm look, I'm looking over here as if there is an actual drummer sitting right on this side of the room. <laughs> I don't know why I'm looking over there. I can look over here. So drum over here. I'm, I'm kidding with you guys. But you see what you see what I mean? You have to bring him in. Body language, communication is very important. You have to help him out. You have to be the heartbeat. OK, you got to be the heartbeat if if he's lacking in that area. OK, so last question. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> this was fun. Uh, I'm going to do this a little off, probably might, maybe once a month. Well, I'll probably do it more than that. Uh, I have some Ask Derek episodes and I'll go live a little bit more uh, showing some techniques and uh, maybe doing some covers and, and uh, trying to transcribe some things like I have done in the past. But if you have guys, if you're new here and you haven't subscribed, um, 
push that subscribe button. Uh, and you just get notified of everything I do or everything I post. I usually post every single Friday. So be on the lookout for that. Sometimes even more, more times than that. But um, somebody asked last question. Somebody asked, where was I going to be in Portland? I'm going to be doing a taping for G uh, Galen Kruger for, for GK. I'm going to be doing a demo for them um, out there in Portland. Um, for this time, I was just in Portland a few weeks ago playing a gospel, uh, like a gospel, I want to call it a tour. Uh, but I was in Seattle, back and forth from Seattle to Portland. But anyway, but yeah, make sure you guys are following. If you're interested uh, in, in following me on social media, it's a ton. I mean, I do covers, songs, all of that good stuff right there on, uh, on Instagram. I have a huge uh, Instagram family as well. So come join us over there. And um, thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. This was fun. I'm going to do this a lot more often. <laughs> uh, and make sure you guys, like I said, if you make sure if, if you're watching the rebroadcast, still ask your questions. Ask your questions for the next episode so I can get to them uh, because these comments won't be saved uh, or these questions won't be saved. So write them again uh, or come back again and ask your questions. I'm sorry I couldn't get to every single question, but you guys are awesome. You guys are great for hanging out with me. Uh, tune in next time. I'll see you later. All right, guys. So listen up. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also push that notification bell icon. I know that's one more step you got to take, but <laughs> it's worth it. So you don't ever miss a lesson that I post every single Friday and even more times than that. And if you're really, really serious about taking your bass playing to the next level, you'll become a Bass Nation Academy member at DerekBennett.com. All the links and all the info is in the description. I want to see you there. Come check us out. Three day free trial. Nothing to lose. I want to see you there. Did I say I want to see? You? I want to see you there. Till next time.